Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Today we're in Devonport Park in Plymouth. Whoa, you're thinking, what's going on here? You've just put up saying, this is Cornwall series. This should be a Cornwall video. Well, yes it is. We're at Devonport Park. I just wanted to show you, I'll be just jumping on a ferry shortly to take us across to Cornwall. Devonport Park is situated above the town of Devonport, right in Plymouth City. And we're also just sighted just above Devonport Naval Docks. The water behind me is the River Tamar and that's what we'll be crossing shortly on the Torpoint Ferry to take us to Cornwall. Now the wall to my right to your left has razor wire on the top of it and it is a military installation. Sorry it's very very windy here today it's a job to hold my uh, camera steady. If you are a fellow YouTuber and you come to Plymouth please be aware that this part of Plymouth is a no drone zone. You're not allowed to fly drones anywhere around here because you'll be in trouble with the military police. They are doing patrols actively. I've just seen a couple of military police vans go past as I'm doing this piece to camera. go under a road bridge but it's an unusual road bridge you have to have security clearance to drive over the top of it it's not part of the public highway it's Ministry of Defence land and it takes you from one part of the uh, naval docks here to the other side So the ferry behind me is not actually in use today or it might be in, brought into use during the rush hour. I think they've just got the uh, two in use. This three is full capacity. They're chain link ferries. And I can't remember the exact year of operation. I think these were refurbished at Falmouth Docks in the, um, the 2000. I'll drop that in and find that information below. But uh, yeah, we're going to be jumping on this. I've got my car's parked in Devonport, so I'm going to walk back to Devonport, get my car, and then we're going to head on to the ferry here. Now, this part of Devonport Park, which is a large park, Victorian Park here in Plymouth. Not sure if it's the biggest park. I think that will be uh, Central Park, but yeah, sure that will be Central Park where the Argyle football ground is. That's where they play. It's also there's a large park and ride here, but uh, we're here in Devonport. And not far from where I did my last video at Mount Wise. It's good to see that uh, Plymouth City Council of uh, this part of the park, as I say, it's bisected by the road, which will cross shortly. Lots of new trees have been planted, which is great to see. Now, Tor Point, which is obviously where the ferry links to, although it's in Cornwall, it's mainly a dormitory town for people that work at the docks here in Plymouth. In fact, that's how it uh, grew up, but uh, it grew up going back hundreds of years ago. It's not a, not a new phenomenon, the, the commuting to Plymouth from Cornwall. And uh, it still remains so, people commuting across that ferry every day. But not only that, the, the ferry plays another important role in linking South East Cornwall, the whole of uh, South East Cornwall, to Devon and to the, the rest of the country. Devonport Park was completely restored. I think it started about 10 years ago and was completed about seven years ago, complete with a bandstand, a new tea pavilion uh, building here, and also the water feature here, and also the uh, formal gardens as well. It's an absolute delight if uh, you ever come to Plymouth. It's well worth seeking out, although it is about uh, three miles to the city centre. There are regular buses, I think they're at every 10 minutes, that can take you to Devonport.
Well, here we are in Cornwall, a very wet Cornwall. We're here at a place called Waker Key. Uh, this, I'm sorry about the splashes on the lens, I will keep wiping them. But uh, this was a strategic, strategic, strategic <laughs> military importance because of a military railway which ran from this quay here up to Scraysden Fort. Well, welcome to Cornwall. I couldn't film on the other side of uh, Tour Point Ferry. It is rather wet here. I've just done a piece of camera. I've had to run into to my car to uh, just to come in. Squally showers, heavy squally showers today, but uh, it's just stopped. Uh, so hopefully there'll be no splashes on the lens. I hope not. I'll be dashing in again. We're at a place called Waker Key, and this is the River Liner or Liner. I never know how to pronounce it. It's Waker Key, and the reason it's uh, of strategic importance is because. This was the terminus of the Waker Quay to Scraysden Fort Military Railway. First came to this site, there was an engine shed with an engine still in it. I never saw the engine, but I was told that it, that it was there and I did see somebody put up a photograph of it. Um, the, the line is very, very interesting. I'm not going to go into the details of the line today. Sorry, it is uh, still spitting with rain here today. But uh, yeah. There is an excellent video which tells you all about it. It's about 40 minutes long, really detailed history of this fantastic inclined plane military railway which ran through a tunnel. And I'll, I'll show you the uh, the base of it, um, where, it where it goes up. Scraysden Fort is one of Palmerston's forts. It's one of the many um, Napoleonic War forts dotted around Devon and Cornwall, around the Plymouth Sound estuary. We're, we're about uh, six miles now from uh, Tor Point where we left, left the ferry. and. Uh, We've, as I say, we've just come here, but the actual engine shed was located over here. Yes, the engine shed was sighted just there in that uh, little um, indentation in the landscape there. And uh, I, I do remember it being there. It was like a, a tin structure. And that was where the engine was stored here at uh, Waker Quay. But the incline is just a bit further along this wonderful wooded footpath which is now part of the uh, Tamer Valley Country Park. Now I just spotted this behind me, I'm not sure what it is, I'll just uh, zoom in there. Um, it appears to be made out of a metal that boilers on steam engines would have been used up. And I'm just wondering if it was uh, a storage facility they used to store water to fill the steam engines. I'm not sure if there's a natural spring there, there doesn't seem to be anything running through it. But uh, that type of uh, riveted steel, um, or iron should I say, w uh, it was the sort of thing you see on the outside of uh, steam engines, with the boilers of the steam engine. So that is potentially possible. Now here we have a granite pillar just lying amongst the trees. And I would imagine originally that would have been on the quay side. How it ended up there, I'm not sure. But this is the track. What I'm actually walking on is the former railway track because it ran alongside the, the railway for a bit. In fact, there you can see some old, some old railway fencing. It wasn't part of any of the big four or anything like that. It was a entirely military and self-contained operation, which meant that Scraysden Fort, if there was, and uh, a war could completely oper operate autonomously because food could be sent up through the tunnels and delivered here by sea direct to Waker Quay. You can see evidence of old sleepers there which have been repurposed as uh, fence posts. I can't remember when this line closed but um, it certainly predates beaching. We're talking, I think it was probably in the 1930s that I actually closed and probably only had a short life. I think it started around the 1880s. We'll put all the uh, data about that um, down the bottom. So I'm standing now where the engine shed once would, uh, stood. Can't really make out anything to, apart from the, the clearing and the fact there is an open space. It's clearly been cut out of the woodland here, so it's obvious that something was here, and I certainly remember seeing it when it was here. Um, but there, there is very little evidence. There's no... Oh, what's that? Yes, there is something here. I've just found something on the ground. That there looks like remains of a rail. Wondering if that was actually situated inside the shed to support the engine while it was on it. Now just behind me here, you can also make out some ballast.
In fact, that whole bank there looks like it was a ballast. Perhaps it was a maintenance depot as well as for storing the, the engine or engines. I'm not sure how many they had. But I think just the one that uh, they would have used a maintenance to to repair the track and the permanent way that's led, led up to the fort. Looks like remains of an earthenware pot there, but I'm not uh, uh, one of these uh, mudlarkers. They've got some brilliant channels on uh, finding bits and pieces around, but uh, that that could be um, a bit of a, a, a misturn because it could be uh, that the, the had been fly tipping in this area because I'm seeing bits of blue nylon as well, which is obviously clearly nothing to do with the, the, the railway. Now the other thing to mention about this video is uh, you may spot some continuity errors. That's the uh, reason is for, as I'm talking speaking to you now, this is day two of filming because I've had to come back on the next morning, stayed overnight here in Cornwall because the, uh, the weather was just so bad yesterday, uh, though it's still a little bit uh, spotty with rain this morning. Um, yesterday afternoon it was horrendous and uh, the wind really got up. This is probably the least known of all the railways in Cornwall. Most of the railways, obviously, we all know about the uh, GWR and the main line and the branches, and also the uh, Southern Railway, the Withered Arm, which uh, went into North Cornwall, and also the China Clay Lines, which somewhere is still in existence, and some other bits and pieces of freight lines. But this military railway is perhaps uh, pretty unique. There is an excellent video done by a channel called Phil in Cornwall. It tells you more about the history of this line, particularly the military part of it, which I don't have time to go into today. But we will go and have a look at uh, Scraysden Fort. We'll see if we can see any remains of the railway at that end of it. But we're, we're here walking along what would have been the track bed of the railway here. As I say, I'll put the link in for Phil in Cornwall's excellent video. I think it's about an hour long in the uh, explanation of my video description below. River Liner, which is uh, just to my left, your right at the moment, is one of uh, Cornwall's lesser known rivers, particularly if you're not familiar with uh, this part of South East Cornwall. Obviously it's not as well known as the Tamar, the Fowl and the Foy, which have, people have all heard of, or most people, if you, particularly if you come on holiday, but uh, less people have heard of the Liner. It flows into the, uh, the Tamar, into the, the wide uh, part of it, um, just before, well, we, we, where we saw we were yesterday at Devonport and the naval base there, the naval dockyard, does flow into it there. Yes, you did see that, right? That is some bird feeders there. <laughs> this path here, which is uh, goes through, some of it goes through National Trust land. There is a National Trust property at Anthony House. Part of it is still owned by the Mil uh, Ministry of Defence as well because of the two forts, which are still and used by the MOD, though the Sprayston one is more accessible. The Trigantle, I know, is used for training exercises. Um, there is a local community trust based in Antony, which manages the site and they have put up bird feeders and seats along this wonderful woodland riverside walk. Now there is an outfall sewage pipe behind me, nothing to do with southwest water. It's actually to do with Scraysden Fort and it's the outfall from Scraysden. I don't believe it's used anymore because uh, it does appear to be broken, but uh, yeah, it just flows out there. And you can see that uh, going into the river. I, say, I don't believe that's, that's used in use anymore. Hopefully not anyway, because it was probably untreated in the days in the, the 19th century when it was built. They have an interesting post line here as well. And certainly that uh, dates from the uh, days of the military railway here. But the, the shape of it is that uh, you can tell it's certainly not uh, southern region or great western region railway. It looks very, very different uh, and obviously gives an indication of the military railway here. A couple of other interesting snippets of information on this board in front of me here. Uh, welcome to the Waker to Anthony Trail. And it tells you that the name Waker, or Wacker, I, th I think it is Waker, comes from Wicker due to the willow trees which grow in this area and they were once grown to make baskets but far more remarkable this along the subject of what we're discovering here today is this which is in front of me it's amazing 
Yes, that, as you've probably seen, is a former turntable which was used here on the Tugantel Military Railway. Where our former military railway really started to climb. Must have been incredible for the locomotives that used this line. So they had two uh, locomotives which were brought from Khartoum. I'll drop details in for this. And uh, as I say, Phil in Cornwall gives you a lot more details on the military background side to this fascinating railway here in Cornwall. Now, although the military railways now seems to be known as the Tregantle Military Railway, I don't know if I ever know if that was its official name. It never actually got to Tregantle Fort itself. But some quarter of a mile outside of the fort for reasons that don't seem to be very, very clear. But it certainly went right into the heart of Scraisden. And we're going to have a look at that next. Now, I apologise for the uh, noisy road that I'm standing next to. I'm just in a, a lay-by. I did go to... Scraised in fort, but unfortunately there's no longer any access available at that site because there's been a lot of vandalism. The MOD have restricted access and they've got CCTV, etc. What we've come up to now is the final terminus of the former military railway. We're actually at Trigantal Fort and I just wanted to show you the line of where the railway went. In the valley down there is where we were at Waker Quay and the railway, which was a steep incline railway, came up that bank and crossed through this car park here, which obviously wasn't a car park then. Grayson Fort's just on the other side of this road, but this probably would have been the terminus of the railway. This actual lay-by here, which was tarmacked tar by Cornwall County Council just a few years ago. And that behind me there is Trigantle Fort. It's still a military site. It was one of Palmerston's fort. Scrayton Fort is very, very similar in size and structure. I say that it was uh, done by Lord Palmerston during the Napoleonic Wars. It was never used in battle. It was obviously to defend the Plymouth Sound area and uh, it is now used for military operations for training exercises and that sort of thing, hence the barbed wire and the sign saying you cannot proceed any further. Indeed, the uh, field that's in front of me, where you can see the gate and the barbed wire, which I'll just insert now, just in a video of that. This is, would have been where the track would have come up to, just short of Trigantel Military Fort. As I say, I don't know why it didn't enter the fort itself. Obviously, the field has now been ploughed, so there's no evidence of the former railway at this site here. Apart from the high core I'm standing on, perhaps it was from ballast. Yeah, because that's where the, the tarmac ends. There's no other reason why there would have been uh, tarmac at that point. So th there is evidence of ballast here in this area. And uh, say so this is where the uh, military line would have ended from Waker Key. Hope you enjoyed the little tour here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little journey into Cornwall today to discover fascinating former military railway very little known but I really highly recommend filling Cornwall's excellent video giving the military background to it really knows his stuff until next time please consider a like share subscribe or comment below particularly if you have got any inf more information about this amazing line here in Cornwall if you hit subscribe and also the bell, then YouTube will alert you to when the next video uploads on my channel here on West Country Wanderings. Thank you very much for watching today and supporting my channel. Take care. Cheers now. Bye-bye.
Thank you.